Huh? I don't know. You guys got it, or should we draw it? Yeah, they're not adjacent carbons. Notice that's the great thing about this reaction of halogenating an alkene. Because the alkene is between two adjacent carbons, it's going to give you functional groups on two adjacent carbons. I should emphasize that. That's one of the neat things about doing addition reactions to alkenes. Since an alkene is a functional group between two adjacent carbons, it gives you a good way to put functional groups on two adjacent carbons. If you need to get functional groups on two adjacent carbons, an alkene is an excellent way to do that, because it already is connecting two adjacent carbons. All right, well, we just did the, uh, the mechanism for this, so I don't know if we should uh, go through it again. The first step would be taking one of the hydrogens and kicking off one of the leaving groups. take off the other hydrogen and kick off the other leaving group and that would give us this as our final product. These do have to be numbered as two separate steps. First you do the halogenation and then when that's done you would do the double elimination so you'd have to number these as two separate steps. Any questions? So let's see, what did we learn? We've learned how to make alkynes. A good way to make alkynes is double elimination, but the starting material for that is halogens on adjacent carbons. But fortunately, in the last chapter, we learned how to put halogens on adjacent carbons by doing a halogenation of an alkene. And then why would you want to make an alkyne? Well, one thing we could do with this is now deprotonate it and use it as a nucleophile to get a longer carbon chain. And there's other things we can do as well, so we can proceed to that. So far, so good? Okay. So whoever said that this would be a good solvent was right. I can see in the textbook that they're listing this is a good solvent for the halogenation steps. CCL4 is the solvent they use in the textbook here. There's probably other solvents that would work too. Okay. We can talk more about the uh, catalyst in a second. There are some details about the catalyst. But first of all, let's just try to predict the product here. We won't go through the whole mechanism for this. Well, what's going to happen here? It's going to remove. Is there excess? Is it like one people? Yeah. OK, then it's going to remove the triple bond. And then two alkane. It's going to get CH3, CH2, 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 CH3. So will we end up with an alkene or an alkane? Alkane. And we would expect this, and this is called hydrogenation. We would expect right. complete hydrogenation here. And people don't usually bother saying that we have excess here. We still we just expect this is going to completely uh, hydrogenate. Well, if you only had one, then you'd get an alkene. Right? Well, uh, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, if you only had one equivalent, you might get a mixture. You might get some of these might not be reduced at all, and some of them might go all the way to the alkanes. Uh, so generally speaking, this is a good thing to use when you want to go all the way to the alkane. And we'll talk in a second about how to get other products. So uh, let's draw the product. We won't go through the whole mechanism, but let's draw the product. We can just draw it like this. Just make sure that you don't add or drop carbons. One of the very common mistakes is to add or drop carbons. This has five and this has five. This is going to completely hydrogenate and get rid of this, uh, this triple bond. 
over here. We do need some type of catalyst. The catalyst in the example in the book was platinum, but probably other catalysts might work too. Maybe palladium on carbon is what we use for alkenes a lot of the time. That would probably work here too. Now the difficulty is, what if you didn't want this to hydrogenate all the way? What if you wanted it to start with, an, what if you wanted to hydrogenate just once and stop with an alkene? Well, we must need somewhat a, a less reactive hydrogenator there. Does anyone remember what the, the right reagent is to use if you want to stop with the alkene? Let's go through that. That's what's called Lindlar's catalyst. Have you guys heard of that? Yeah, okay. So again, let's, let's motivate that a little. If you, want to, if you want to turn a alkyne into an alkene, this hydrogenation is a great way to go. But what if we wanted to turn this into a, so what's actually going to happen here? First, this is going to hydrogenate this into an alkene, and then it's immediately going to hydrogenate it into an alkyne without stopping. But what if we wanted it to stop with the alkene? Well, we'd have to use a less active hydrogenator, so to speak, and it turns out that the Linlar's catalyst is the way to do that. Let's see if we can draw the product here. By the way, the Lindlar's catalyst is still a metal catalyst. We still have, uh, we're still going to be using uh, palladium here. Lindlar's catalyst is simply palladium. I don't know if you need to have this memorized, but the Lindlar's catalyst is, oh, it's kind of complicated. It's palladium precipitated on calcium carbonate and treated with lead acetate and quinoline. Yeah, All right, you probably don't need to have that memorized. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, the key thing is that you're still going to have a, a, a metal as part of that. Apparently, palladium that's been uh, precipitated on some other stuff. So there's still going to be uh, some palladium here. So the, ba the basic mechanism seems like it's probably going to be the same. These two hydrogens will attach to a speck of palladium. These two hydrogens will attach to a speck of palladium, and then from that platform, they're going to attack the double bond. That's right. That's exactly what I was getting at. We need the stereochemistry. We expect this to be what's called a syn addition. Nice. Just like any hydrogenation is syn, we expect any hydrogenation to be syn because they all have these metal catalysts where the hydrogens are both attached to the same speck of metal. So they should both be coming in from the same direction. We don't need to draw the whole mechanism to understand that aspect. They're both going to be attached to that same speck of metal, so they should be coming in from the same direction. So that was something that looked like somebody you might have left out of your pictures. Our picture has to look something like this to show that the two hydrogens came in from the same direction. Shouldn't that one on top also be that's draw alkene. alkene? Yeah, but alkene, remember we were talking about how when you draw it like that, it's like trans, but if you draw it... That would only apply if there were double bonds here. So, I, I, it sounds like you're asking, should I draw it like this? Or like this? Now, it turns out that makes no difference because there's free rotation around this single bond. So you could draw it like this, but a millisecond later it's going to rotate back into this position. And then a millisecond later it's going to rotate back into this position. These would be considered equivalent drawings because there's free rotation around this bond. On the other hand, are these equivalent drawings? No, because there's no free rotation around the double bond. So the moral is, it's very important whether you draw this methyl group pointing up or down, because that tells us whether it's cis or trans to the methyl group on the right. But it's completely unimportant whether we draw this methyl group pointing up or down. It doesn't matter whether it's cis or trans to the methyl group on the right, because there's free rotation. It's just going to keep going back and forth between cis and trans, so to speak. 
In fact, that's why we don't even use the word cis and trans for single bonds, because those situations are so fleeting, that's not an interesting way to classify that. We only use cis and trans around double bonds. We only care about cis and trans around double bonds. So it really doesn't matter how you draw this. You could have drawn this any way you like. But there's no free rotation around this double bond. There's no free rotation around this double bond, so here it's crucial that we put the hydrogens both on the same side. 